fact check. Woman was oh. not arrested for not wearing a mask. She was arrested for criminal trespassing. <laughs> So the fact check here summarizes the story. Was a woman arrested at a middle school football game for not wearing a mask? No, that's not true. A video went viral showing a woman not wearing a mask at a football game in Logan, Ohio, and a police officer tasing her, pulling her in handcuffs, and taking her away. However, she was arrested on school property for criminal trespassing, not for not wearing a mask, the Logan Police Department said. Now, Jim. Is there anything that I'm missing in background here? I know, uh, you know what, what's the venue, what's the circumstance, uh, what, what, what's the event? How did this come together? Uh, okay, so the venue is a middle school football game. You can see it there, as many people as show up at a middle school football game is just yeah. not that many. Uh, none of the cheerleaders were wearing masks. People were doing their social distancing thing. The lady that got arrested had a mask in her pocket. But and the cop wasn't wearing a mask at first, and then he had it down below his nose. Just all kinds of, of ridiculousness. But the, but the whole point of the story, though, is they're trying to frame it like they're trying to use legalese. Basically, they're trying to use legal definitions and get people to say she was arrested for trespassing. But even in the article, it goes on to say that she was trespassed for for refusing school policies the school policy of not wearing a mask so you know what i mean they're trying so you, like they don't want us out there saying people were being arrested for not wearing a mask so they're trying to get people to call it trespassing instead. technically legally maybe that's right but you see where i'm going with this it's undeniable that the whole thing revolves around her refusal to wear a mask so you got into a debate about this online with i did yeah i got yelled at a little bit basically they were arguing that the school has the right to make that policy and uh, if you don't like the mask policy you can leave and that they were justified in arresting this lady and they said the same thing uh like they tried to argue that if they went into the football stadium naked it'd be the same thing i said yeah but if you go in there naked are you going to be arrested for trespassing or are you going to be arrested for exposing yourself in front of minors that's a whole different crime you know what i mean <laughs> right no no well that's yeah you could get arrested for both right or you could get well, right i mean if you if, if the if the cops are nice and you're naked running across the field i mean if it's a middle school game and you're an adult right. you're probably going to get charged with something else if you're a college right. female doing it at a college game you'll get ejected for trespassing and, and the cops are probably not going to press any further charges right but uh, the, the other context the other Sorry, I was going to say the other important part of the argument, though, is whether or not the school, I was trying to argue that the school is public property. It's a public school, so they shouldn't right. be well, allowed to make those that, mandates. Okay, so that, that, that's a different layer of, of the debate here. Let's let's come back to that or, 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 or uh, of this analysis, because you are taking the position that she was arrested for not wearing a mask and other people were arguing with you saying that pe that she was arrested for trespassing and and this is a really dumb argument now if there are people trying to further the propagandist agenda here of burying the story so that we don't have another famous uh, arrested for not wearing a mask or or they can just kind of try to bury the story that way i mean it's a pretty weak attempt I mean, it's pretty pathetic if they're really making an effort to bury the story because they're definitely getting some Streisand whiplash, unintended consequences kind of effects with this at this point. Um, but you're, it, it's a really it, dumb argument uh, because they're, it, it, it's dumb to argue about uh, because they're both technically correct. If the charge was trespassing, you can say she was arrested for trespassing. Like that's that's what the you know it was for. The word for here, right? It depends on what your definition of is is. No, but the word for is not only a word that has many multiple definitions, but applications, even in the definition that we're using it here with of of you know of a cause related to, right? For uh in, in that sense. 
And so there's the, the legal way, you know, you could use that, apply that word and say she got arrested for trespassing. Why did she get arrested for trespassing? And now you get to the purpose and intent use of the word for or application of the word for. And that's a lot more useful, right? You know, like to ask, answer the question, why did she get arrested? You know, for trespassing? No, she got arrested for not wearing a mask, for being somewhere she was supposed to be without a mask. Now, technically, if that manifests as trespassing, it, it becomes kind of a semantics game. You know, like, did you get arrested for killing your roommate or did you get arrested for manslaughter? Like both. Neither is really trying to spin it one way or another. One is just being specific about the act. One is being specific about the charge, the, the actual crime. So you might even make the case that technically it was trespassing on, in this legal framework that if you come here in a way that doesn't respect our policies, you're trespassing. That's what you're going to get removed for. But clearly the important interpretation and application of the, of, of the word for, right, is that she got arrested for not wearing a mask. Right. right. Now, she, did she face charges? Like, is she actually going to be... I think she got it? released. Uh, I, I think she got cited and released in the parking lot or whatever. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're not going to get... Yeah, they're not... Well, uh, not in America, at least. Uh, you know, we talked about this internationally that, you know, a lot of countries do have it worse. Uh, but, yeah, rarely in the U.S. will you, like, do overnight time even for not wearing a mask. Man, you know, yesterday I went to Flagstaff. I was running errands all afternoon. And yeah, it's 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 weird. It's it's zombie land, man. And you know, a, a lot of people are against this, and, and from what I understand now, they're against it, but they're just going along to get along. And there's something, you know, symbolic when you proactively put on a mask that signals to politicians you you're, you're ready to submit yeah. you're ready to comply and I, I do think you know I, I don't this isn't you know the end of the world uh, at least I don't think so <laughs> uh, this isn't masks leading us off a cliff. And I'm not, I'm not, I don't want to overblow the significance of masks. It's not like, I mean, if you walk around with your wallet on your chest, you know, or around your neck uh, that says politicians, please take what you want. That would be a lot worse than wearing a mask, you know, like just, just for perspective, you know, uh, or, but uh, it, it's like that. It, it's a milder form of that. Uh, and it's, it, it is disturbing and it is worth fighting. And it, it is, at least in the United States, the, the, the masks, this is a really active battleground. People are getting arrested for not wearing masks. And I, I'm, I'm kind of, you know, yesterday going, going around all the different shops that I went to seeing way like an employees in Flagstaff universally mask. Um, I found that, you know, places like hardware stores, tractor supply, Harbor Freight, they're not, uh, their customers are, you know, not, not quite as strict as the staff. Uh, but everywhere else, I'm like the only one. You know, I go to Walmart, go to the drugstore, um, grocery stores. But it, what's crazy about it is that it, you know people don't believe in it because if they believed in it, you would get stopped and asked. Right. You would get stopped and encouraged by other customers. Hey, can you do you ever do you have a medical exemption? Okay, well I'll respect that. Have a nice day, sir. Like people would ask, you know, like they wouldn't, you know. Well, I, I don't want to pry, but uh, can, do you mind telling me what your medical exemption is? And if they ask, they say, "Fucking sanity, right. science, uh, you know, like uh, logic." Uh, and it's not that there's a, there's a real anti-science component to this that people don't realize that that pseudoscience manipulated by authority has reached a whole new level, and it's it's with the masks and and just to reiter reiterate for people, wearing masks for prolonged periods has been shown in controlled studies in environments with proper control and experimental groups 
to increase the spread of viruses. It's not productive. Distancing, hygiene, quarantine for people who are sick, it's just like the flu. In that sense, if you're sick, stay home. And for a while, for a long time, I had to couch when I said it's like the flu. You know, it might be a, a, a bit more deadly. It might be, you know, a couple times more deadly. You know, and now you go probably less deadly, actually. After we got that 6% number from the CDC that only 6% of cases were just corona. And, and I get it. Yeah, it's an aggravating factor in the rest with people with pre-existing conditions. And it's too soon to tease apart exactly how deadly this virus is or what a special threat it is. But it's not the thing is it's not. We can say decisively it's not a special threat, first of all. That of all the regular events in this great global human petri dish, the, the, the great human family, the, the whole a uh, lot of everything that we're subjected to on a regular basis of viruses that get out there and, and like I, I I could say still at worst this is a funky off season flu, right? Uh, just in terms of putting it in in perspective with what we understand and none of it justifies i mean not only is, is wearing masks counterproductive but none of it justifies any coercive interference with people's freedoms and economic lives and it, it i'm i'm still optimistic that, that there's going to be a major you know a, a great leap forward of awareness that comes out of this but uh when I hear that people are still making this argument, you know, for, no, it was trespassing. Mm -hmm. Even, even among, you know, even among our friends and libertarians, you know, I think we have a tendency to take it for granted that everybody who says I'm a libertarian is on the same page. And, and those of us who, you know, get our heads so deep in the game often end up with our heads up our asses, assuming that everybody who calls themselves uh, a libertarian is as informed as we are. There's a much bigger information war and paradigm war. And, and you know, uh, some people think we're coming to a breaking point. I, I, um, I'm, I'm more inclined to believe that change happens slowly, subtly, and that the real positive news in many ways is hidden from us. And so I hope we can bring it to you here on, on Adam versus the man and have, you know, the conversations like this and raise these debates and, hopefully provide at least a little perspective and enlightenment. Right, Jim? Yeah. Yeah. You got it. Anything else you want to say about this case? Uh, well, just really quick, just a real quick opinion from you about the, uh, the public status, the fact that it's a public school. Oh, right. Is, I said would you, could, would you say this lady's rights yeah. were violated or do you think this public school is justified in making that policy? So, we have a really dangerous false concept of property to begin with and, and, and general lack of respect for it. So the I, it, it, to, to put it in real terms, for this woman to have a claim of ownership there, uh, you know you, you have to point you, you have to acknowledge that she's been stolen from as a taxpayer. And that every taxpayer then inherently has equal access to every government facility. And I don't think that's fair. I don't think, I mean, I don't, I don't say that's not fair. I mean, in a sense, that's true, but it's not, it doesn't give you a practical way out of this. And, you know, th th there is a communal claim to ownership there, but not to access. And so for an institution like this, and I hate to sound like I'm defending government, but I if you, you know, apply libertarian principles to this superficially and go, well, she was stolen from and therefore, uh, you know, she has claim to ownership and therefore has access. First of all, you're making a leap from ownership to access, right? Like, you know, I, I just because I own one share in Tesla doesn't mean that I can walk into the factory whenever I feel like it and just start moving shit around and say, but I own one share's worth of this. So no, that doesn't, that doesn't, you know, and, and I, and again, I'm not, but you have, again, I'm not saying this to defend the state, but in the framework that we have accepted for a practical functioning society that she, she is kind of accepted by sending her kid to this middle school, assuming she's a parent and not just some creeper, right? Um, 
that uh, she or or that she has, you know, whatever teacher or, you know, uh, relative or friend. Or she, was a par- she was a parent of the yeah. opposing team's football game. Ah, ah, oh, the plot thickens. There's that other ring. Oh, it's good. Let's get down. Oh, she's cheering for the, the visitors. Let's get her out of the stands. <laughs> OK, yeah, no, I don't I don't I don't I doubt that was a significant motivator. Right. Um, but, uh, even if she was a parent at the school there and, and you kind of accept, so here she's a guest, uh, of a community where sensibly she doesn't even pay taxes, right? If these schools are funded, I know, I know the, the, the money that goes to every government school is so convoluted. And as long as there's money from the federal government, you know, every American could say they have a claim to it, but hypothetically it's funded from funded from local property taxes primarily. And so a visiting parent would be a guest there and wouldn't have such a claim. But in the sense that she's a taxpayer and everybody has claim because it's all in this government network of schools and you're a guest and this is normal usage, whatever. Um, uh, even if she was a parent at that school or a local property taxpayer, uh, I, I don't think that gives her, her access uh, in this current framework. That being said, obviously, the government's claim to ownership of that property really is invalid in the first place because it's it's based on theft. Um, but, you know, we, we still have to accept a practical framework for property usage in, in this uh, existing context. And in a way, I, 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 I don't want to blame the victim, but when you consent to, you know, you're sending your kid to a government school, you're, you're going and stepping on government property because it's not public property, it's government property, right? Realistically, I was, you know, how is it actually, you know, ownership, you can say claim to ownership, but ownership, what does it really mean? That you have control. And, you know, we, we have all these constructs around property, like, because society acknowledges or recognizes that you own it, then you own it. Uh, and there's a certain, there's a, there's a lot of subjective nature to that. Uh, but in this case, uh, no, I, I don't think that plays in, in favor, but that, you know, of, of her having a claim, but that does make, their policy of singling her out for not wearing a mask all the more ridiculous uh, doing that to someone who's a guest. Yeah. And yeah. It's, it's not just, it would be one thing if everybody was taking it really seriously and really believed in it. And I, I would concede if they really believed in it. But when you say the cheerleaders aren't wearing masks and players aren't wearing masks, and cops come up not wearing masks. No. No. No, you have no leg to stand on.